Hi, it's Dr. Centeno, and today we're going to really dive into a review of the Livion Regenerative Medicine product, uh, and it's basically a deep dive into a report uh, that they have been sending out to various physicians uh, purporting to show that their product has many live mesenchymal stem cells. Now, this video is much more about the fact that physicians need a resource to learn how to interpret viability testing than it is about any specific product. Uh, I'm just using Livion as a great example here because that's the one that was just sent out. But it's extremely important that physicians understand this because they get bombarded with this stuff these days and they generally don't know what to make of it all. First thing you need to recognize is that FDA registered does not equal FDA approved. Simply put, FDA registered is an online process for a 361 tissue where you just basically go on and you pay your money and you register it and you give them information. FDA approved is a drug process with uh, three phase clinical trials, cost a couple hundred million dollars over a number of years. So all of these birth tissues are FDA registered, and yet they're claiming to have live viable cells, which is technically not appropriate because if they have live viable cells, they have to be FDA approved. And so far, none of these products that we've tested has actually had live cells, which is really interesting that many of them have pr uh, proclaimed that they do, they put out reports that they do, we've tested them in our lab and found out it's all dead. And before I jump in, I should say that uh, I really have an interest in this. And my interest is trying to find an amniotic or cord tissue company that really has a lot of viable mesenchymal stem cells. I will be their largest customer by far. There won't even be a close second. So I care deeply about whether these white papers are really fact or fiction. And Every single company we've tested and we've seen white papers on really fails along three basic lines. Awful survival rates out of cryopreservation, uh, only simple live dead testing with no actual testing of true clinical viability, and that's an important distinction, and poor flow cytometry that's really incapable of identifying stem cells. And Livion is really no different, as I'll show you. So let's jump into the Livion data. The first thing we see uh, is simple live dead testing. And what's interesting about that is that we see 59 and 63% viability, which is pretty awful. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But much more importantly, it doesn't tell you whether or not uh, the cell is alive and healthy. Uh, sitting in the ICU, meaning the cell is about to die because it's been so badly beat up, or dead. Uh, in fact, all it shows you is that the live cells are either one of these two and the dead cells are over here. Now, normal recovery rates out of cryopreservation are approximately 90% plus. So recovery rates of 50 to 60% for hardy fetal uh, cells like this generally means that the cells have been through uh, a cell version of Dante's Inferno. These cells have been beat up in a big way. So you right off the bat would have serious concerns that any of them will really live to be viable and do anything. And yet Livion makes no attempt to test beyond just the simple live dead. They don't test for apopt apoptotic markers. They don't try to culture these cells out to see what will grow. None of that is done. Next comes the flow cytometry. And as I've always said, if you really want to uh, sail something over a doctor's head, throw flow data at them because it's not something that we get taught about in school or residency. So this is what Livion says. Um, and it's basically telling us that They've chosen their cell markers, which is what flow cytometry tests for, uh, based on standard markers used for mesenchymal stem cells. 
And this is the paper they reference, which is the position paper on determining if you have mesenchymal stem cells. It was put out by the ISCT a number of years ago. And it says to ID a mesenchymal stem cell, you need uh, these three markers that are on the surface of the cell. And the cells need to lack expression of all these other markers. And then and only then does the flow cytometry say that there are probably MSCs. But then you also need to grow the cells out in plastic adherent culture, which was not done here at all. And you also need to make sure that the cells can differentiate into osteoblast, adipocytes, and chondroblast in vitro, which again was not done at all here. So all that was done was the flow cytometry testing. So how did the Livion white paper do? Um, pretty poorly. We see a lot of problems here. Well, they tested for CD90. For some reason, and God knows why, they left out CD105 and CD73. While they ultimately proved that their cells lacked expression of CD45 and CD34, they completely skipped over CD14 or CD11. And they did do this test here. So it's kind of a hodgepodge. So the stem cells weren't tested using the IS, ISCT standards, and yet that's the paper that's referenced. And I put stem cells in quotes for a very good reason. Uh, there in quotes, MSCs had CD90, but so do neuronal cells, uh, uh, a subset of fetal liver, liver cells, uh, thymocytes, fibroblast, activated endothelial cells. Their MSCs do have HLA, ABC, but pretty much so do all cells. So no big deal there. Their MSCs didn't have HLA, DR, but that's a common T cell receptor. Their MSCs didn't have CD3, 4, and CD45. So we know they're not HSCs, hematopoietic stem cells. And we know they're not lymphocytes, at least the subset that they tested, the small number of cells they tested. But you also have to recognize that before they gated off of that, that 72% of the cells were in fact identified as leukocytes. So what cells are CD90 positive, HLA, ABC positive, uh, CD34 negative, CD45 negative, and HLA, DR negative? Uh, God knows, but they're certainly not MSCs, meaning that is not the signature of MSCs. There may be MSCs in that subset, but that can't be determined by the poor job of flow cytometry that was done here that didn't follow the ISCT guidelines, despite referencing that. In addition, as I've said, they didn't determine if the cells were plastic adherent in culture and they didn't try to differentiate them. So we really have no idea whether or not there were MSCs in this sample. Now let's look at growth factors because this is equally as embarrassing uh, as the flow data. So this is the chart they put out and you're like, wow, this is great. We got some, we got some VEGF, we got some FGF, fibroblast growth factor, some stem cell factor, we've got some uh, uh, ILRA in here you know, that might be really good. But now let's take and really compare this to common things we know. So this is now a comparison. There's the references down there. Uh, so this is just one X PRP that we tested has more VEGF than their sample. Obviously, if you inject five X PRP, you've got five times that much. So the, the amount of VEGF they have is ridiculously low compared to a much cheaper $200 PRP shot. This is the amount of FGF that's actually in 1X PRP. Again, much, much higher. And you can bring it much, much higher than that if you actually have 5X PRP. This is the amount of stem cell factor that's just in serum. Forget about PRP. This is just taking someone's blood, separating out the serum, and you have dramatically more stem cell factor. This is, this is the amount of uh, ILRA that's in uh, just whole blood. And this is the amount that's in bone marrow concentrate. Now, obviously that's 13,000 and I would need to put it way, way, way off 
the slide here if we're going to accurately represent. So again, we're not seeing anything here about this chemical signature that would make me impressed that this is uh, a stem cell or regenerative medicine type product that's, that's really worth a damn based on uh, the in vitro assays of the uh, cytokines that are and growth factors that are present. So in conclusion, uh, the viability rates are so dismal that it's highly likely that all this product is dying on the thaw. The white paper makes no attempt to determine if these cells are functionally viable, i.e. if they have apoptotic markers or culturing them. Uh, the flow cytometry uh, data doesn't have the ability to identify a mesenchymal stem cell. And they didn't do the other two tests to make sure you have that mesenchymal stem cells either. And the growth factor levels are far less than PRP serum or bone marrow concentrate. So it's not impressive along that axis either. So, ah, will somebody please find a single amniotic or cord blood cell product that isn't a massive disappointment, one that can beat the pants off a $200 PRP kit? If you can, I'm all in. Up until then, stop sending out crappy data and, uh, and trying to impress physicians with it. Uh, and if you continue to do that, I'll continue to tear it apart. Because again, physicians need to know how to understand this stuff. And if there is a product that comes out that is amazing, I'll be the first one to tell you. Thanks so much and have a great day.